guys, and welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the WIOA program, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, and how I was able to utilize this program to pay for my medical billing and coding training. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay, guys. So I have a few people in my audience that are currently going through this program right now, and they wanted to know what happens after you get done with the program, what happens next. So I will get into that in a minute, <laughs> but let me go ahead and start off with what the WIOA program is, in case you don't know. So the WIOA program is offered with the Department of Labor, and what this is is a program that has funding uh, to help people who have been displaced workers, right? if you've been laid off, if you are a military veteran, if you are a um, child that is aging out of the foster care system, if you are a low wage um, worker, somebody who's, who's making very low wages, um, you can qualify for this or you potentially qualify for this program. It's going to vary from state to state, okay guys? That's just something that you got to know. Um, I am currently in the state of Texas. So when I went through this program, it was called the WIA, <laughs> and they changed it to the WIOA, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. I will be leaving the link for this in the description box below, but you can also find out about it through um, your local workforce office. Some of you may know it as the unemployment office, at least that's what I called it back in the day, it was the unemployment office. Um, so when I found out about this program, I had to go to a class about education and at the workforce office, they have all kinds of programs like help you get your GED and to help you get back into, you know, working, um, working through other means. And then they also had this about education. And so the deal was, is that you had to, um, pick a program, you had to choose from three different schools, you had to visit the three different schools and then pick one, and then they gave you a voucher to give to them. And then you had to complete the program. If you did not complete the program, then you were, um, you had to pay back uh, that money for what they spent to send you to the school. And so I did not want to do that. <laughs> they said that the only way you didn't have to pay back was by going to the school, completing the school, and then finding a job in the field that you were trained. So when I was first there, I was thinking, you know, they had a bunch of different, um, you know, trades that you could go learn about. And again, it's going to vary from state to state. So not every state offers these particular ones, but um, check with your state, check with the workforce office in your state. And the ones that, that I had were like um, trucking, they had a, a beautician or, you know, any of those things. <laughs> a nail technician, I think, was one of them as well. Um, and then they had one for um, a medical assistant. And they also had for like medical secretary, medical billing and coding. And they had accounting. And they had a few other ones. And I said, oh, I wanted to do accounting because I can do numbers. I'm a numbers person. And so my case manager was like, well, why don't you try medical billing and coding? And I said, oh, no, I don't, I don't do nothing with needles, you know. <laughs> and then he's like, no, 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 it's not needles. It's, it's looking through documentation, like medical records, and then assigning a code based on, you know, what happened or a procedure code for, you know, the insurance or for statistical purposes. So I said, oh, that sounds interesting. And he's like, you know, check out these three schools, you know, pick three schools and check them out and then let us know which one that you want. He goes, and if you go to these schools and you decide you don't like what they're saying to you, then just come back and we'll get you in the accounting program. So I said, okay, I've got nothing to lose, right? <laughs> uh, so the first one that I went to, I didn't like it. I didn't like what they were saying and it was really a sales pitch and it sounded like they were trying to sell like the dreams, trying to sell the dream about like this career field. And so then the second one, the guy was, the recruiter was pretty cool. He was writing out different medical terms and I was telling him all the terms that I knew. And he was very impressed because he's like, most of the time when I write these words, people don't get them. <laughs> and so I said, he goes, are, are you, do you have a nursing background? I said, no, no, actually I don't. I just like to read. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so then I went to the last school and the lady was really nice and she was like, you know, well, what do you know about medical billing and coding? And I was like, nothing. You know, I was just told to just, you know, check it out and see if, 
it was going to be a good fit for me. So she started explaining the different associations. She explained AHIMA, she explained AAPC, and so she was talking about the credentials, and she's like, well, we model our program after the American Health Information Management Association, AHIMA, and um, you would be prepared for their exams. Um, you could take either one, but you know this is the one that a lot of people are looking for in this area. And so when I looked, you know, I confirmed that yes, they were looking for mostly a HEMA credentials in my area. So I was like, okay. And so I liked the way that the setup was at the school. It was, um, she said, this is going to be all on you. And I'd never had never been in a school situation like that. Remember, guys, <laughs> this was this was in the 2000s. So this was like, you know. Uh, everything was still very new. I mean, it was there was no smartphones, there was no none of that, right? And this was like you could do this all online, but you had to go to the school and go do it on the computer. And there was no class. She said there is a class. We do have a gentleman that comes in and talks to the students um, like every couple of weeks, but you know it's just like a seminar. You know, you can go to it if you want to. She goes, but you basically pick your own hours that you want to come here, and some people are here as soon as we open the doors and then as soon as we close the doors they're here all day <laughs> so I said okay so I went there and I and they gave you modules to work through and I was like okay so this is easy enough and every time you completed a module at that school um, they would give you like um, your next set of books and so that was what was motivating me to get through the program as quickly as I did because I wanted to get the new books and that was my <laughs> little goal post every single time uh, but every school is different and I had to check in with my uh, case manager who would ask me if there's anything that I needed you know they they're also meant to help you get in touch with like other resources and things like that and so ways of like helping you if like you needed other things like food stamps and things like that I didn't need that at the time so you know I was okay there but you know there was just other things that they said well we can help you with this and we can help you with that so they helped me to get clothes to go out once I completed my program to go look for jobs I was able to get in touch with an organization dress for success who helped me to get an outfit and everything <laughs> so that was really good and my experience with the workforce office was awesome because they were really supportive and you know my my case manager was like hey you know how's it going how's school going and he had retired from the military and so he knew what it was like and you know I remember seeing his diplomas in his office and being so impressed like you know I know he could do it I can do it you know but I'm learning a trade you know and so uh, that's what I did you know the whole time I kept up with him and and I told him about my progress and, and where I was in the program he would make notes and he said just stay with it stay with it you know he goes because I know it's hard right now he goes but we're, we're gonna you know try to help you wherever we can and so that was really awesome you know having a really good support system when you're an adult learner is literally everything if it hadn't been for my mom and for him I don't know guys <laughs> it was it was really tough you know uh, because you're learning you know you're learning what doctors know we have to know what doctors know we'll never have gone to medical school well, that's how I felt because I was learning medical terminology and I was learning anatomy and I was learning pathophysiology and I was going through all these modules and then it would go to HIPAA and medical law and ethics and then it started to go into ICD-9 because we were in ICD-9 at the time. <laughs> ICD-10 didn't get implemented until October of 2015, okay? So when I was in this program, it was in 2007, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm going to this program, and then, of course, I complete the program. So now I get to the end of the program, and then they say, okay, well, whenever you're ready to sit for the exam, you know, we'll help you pay for your certification exam. So I said, okay, so I had to pay part of it, they pay part of it. And then um, I took my test and I passed and I was like, oh, thank you, God, you know. And so he was so excited. And the day that I went and told my case manager, because I had to meet with him, you know, frequently. And so when I went over there, he was telling everybody. He ran out of his office and he was telling everybody. He's like, you know, um, I, ha I have my client and she, she just finished her program and I'm so proud of her. You know, they're like, wow, congratulations, you know. And so, you know, I was so excited to get my credential. And so then it was the hard part. It was okay. I passed my certification exam. Now to find a job, you know. 
And so meanwhile, I had picked up some work. I had been uh, working and, um, you know, as a bartender, I had done, you know, housekeeping. I have, I had been doing, uh, working at a halfway house, you know, and so I was doing all of these things, right? And he's like, okay, so have you applied here, applied there? And then I was like, yes, I've been applying and they're saying, you know, I need experience and I'm like, I still know. And so I kept applying. So two months went by and so we're still waiting and he's still applying and everything like that. And then I ended up, um, my mom was like, go back to the school and see if they can, you know, put you in contact with somebody who knows something about the industry or where you can go. So I went and I talked to the principal. I'm like, what is going on? I finished the program. I did really well. I passed my test. I'm like, what, what do I do? And he's like, well, he's like, I have a friend who has a temp agency and this temp agency is for medical professions. He goes, so, you know, hopefully she can get you something. And so I'm like, I don't want a temporary job. He goes, but he goes, if you go to this temp agency, he goes and if you work in these assignments, all the assignments that they put you on is going to be filler for your resume. He goes, you just need something for your resume. And so I said, okay. So I went over there and I took their assessment test and they were like, okay, you know, um, just we'll, we'll call you back in a week. So I was like, okay. And I'm like, nah, they're not going to call me back. You know, <laughs> I was like, I've been looking and you know, they're not going to find anything. So then lo and behold, I got a call in a week and she was like, well, you know, we have an assignment. And this assignment is only 90 days. She goes, but it's going to be you and two other ladies. And you're essentially going to be competing for the permanent position. They just need help with the backlog right now. It's going to be at the Cancer Therapy Research Center. And so I'm like, well, you know, okay, you know, that's no big deal. And so I get there and it's it's two older ladies um, that, that just got their certifications as well. <laughs> and they were like, okay, this is my first coding job too. And so... We were all in a room together and we, you know, did, um, we were just coding, basically just coding from paper charts and we didn't have encoders. We had our books and we had to do all of that. We had to look up the codes in the books and stuff. And so it's not like that now, you know, <laughs> because keep in mind, electronic medical records were still in their infancy back then, right? It's not as explosive as it is now, right? And so... You know, we're sitting there and we and I learned so much uh, from my time there. Uh, but then at the end, I didn't get picked. But that's OK, uh, because it wasn't on technical ability. It was just that manager herself. The manager was a little weird and I'm just glad I didn't end up staying anyway. <laughs> so um, when I got the call from the temper agency that I didn't get the position, they go, but we don't have anything else here in town, but we do have. Uh, we do have a contract that we just got, but it's eight hours away and you'd have to move there on your own dime. And I was like, well, I, you know, I can't go, you know, because my mom was sick at the time and, and I didn't want to leave her. My mom was like, oh, no, you're going. <laughs> you're going. So she helped me to move, you know, and so she's like, just get your experience and then come back, you know. And so I was like, OK, so I uh, she helped me to move. I moved over there. And then, um, meanwhile, um, the whole time that I was doing all of this transitioning, I had been keeping up with my, um, manager and he was like, okay, my case manager. And he's like, well, he's like, now that you have this other job, because the other job was supposed to be more permanent. So the one that I moved to. And so he's like, um, since it's going to be for years and years, you know, you're, you're good to go. And, you know, we may be checking in on you, uh, maybe once a year for a couple of years. So I said, okay. And he's like, well, you know, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm glad too, you know? And so I worked out there and, um, I was still applying for jobs cause I was trying to get back home. That was my, my biggest thing. I was so far away from my mom who was sick and I didn't want to be away from her. And I just wanted to get back home. So I ended up um, uh, getting a job eight months into my, my stint there, right? I had gotten a job on my own without the temp agency, and uh, but it was still uh, a little ways from home, about two hours from home. And I said, well, this is great because, you know, I, I'm still closer. You know, this is still going to be a little bit easier for me just by being closer. So I moved here to my forever home now, you know, and so... I, um, I did get a call from the, um, the workforce office. My case manager had moved on 
and it was going to be this new lady. And with this new lady, I had to check in with her once a month. It was a little bit more like strict. They wanted to like, they were getting statistical information basically on how I was doing, you know, and you know, how much money was I making? How many hours was I working? Was I full time? Was I still working in the field that I was trained in? And I said, yes. And I showed them my, um, my my job description and I and I gave them my job title and everything and so she was like oh this is great you know this is wonderful and she's like check in with me once a month and let me know that you're still working full time and then after this year then you know we won't we won't need to check in with you after this so I said okay so after that whole year of checking in checking in um that was it you know it was just there was no more checking in and I think I got like one more follow-up call like six months after that but that was it, you know, and so that was me completing my my requirements, whatever I needed to do to show that I had, you know, got a job in the field that I was trained and I didn't have to pay back this money uh, to the state or anybody <laughs> because I was still working in this field and, you know, working in this field. And then it's now 15 years later, right? It's 15 years later and I'm enjoying every single minute of it, you know. And so this was really a blessing. It was a wonderful program to be able to be out there and for me to have gotten into it at the time that I did. I still don't know what I would be doing because I had no idea what medical coders even were <laughs> when I started. So that's, that's, it's something that's, like I said, you know, medical coding finds people. And I still believe that medical coding found me and like all the stars aligned so that I could get into this career field. Because I have said it many times, this was not any, any, in any part of my imagination was being in the health field anywhere. Okay. I wanted to be an attorney. There's a big part of me that still does. Right. Uh, but I wanted to be an attorney since I was in the second grade and I still have like those memory books that they, you know, you make for your parents and, um, and it says, I want to be a lawyer <laughs> in second grade. And I've always, I've always had that in the back of my head. I've always had that, you know, that desire to do that. But at the time when I had gotten into the program, you know, I was just getting a divorce and I was going through all those things. And, so it was a very difficult time to even think about all that. You know, when you're in your 20s and you're you're thinking about like, okay, I'm either, I'm either going to work or I'm going to go to college or I'm going to do all these other things. And you don't really know where you, what you're going to do, you know, because I could have easily have gone to law school then and just pursued it and done all that. But I was trying to be a good wife and I was trying to do the right thing and you know, I was married and he didn't want me to do that. And so I had put that to bed for a time, but the desire never went away. The desire to learn the law and to go to law school and any of that never went away. It's still, like I said, it still hasn't gone away, but I have this new passion. You know, I have this passion for medical coding, the health information industry. And there's so much growth that I've gotten from it, you know, and I've been very fortunate that for the last 15 years, I've had this wonderful career that I'm still in, you know, I'm still in this career. And there was a lot of people in the beginning that were saying, oh, that uh, uh, medical coding is going away. It's going to be sent overseas. It's going to be taken over and blah, blah, blah. And all this and all blah, blah, blah. That's all I, that's all I hear. Whenever people start talking like they, they know our industry and they don't know our industry, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, but you know, again, I was so fortunate to go through this program and the fact that it was there and it's still available. And it's still helping people because when I get those comments from people, it says, oh, you know, I'm, I, I heard about you going through it, so I'm going to go through it. And I was approved for it. And I'm, and I'm in this program. I'm learning, you know, and the fact that it all starts right there, you know, it all starts with a program that it just gives you that leg up to help you. And that's the, the great thing. You know, that's a great thing about this program. And I am forever grateful because I am a productive a uh, contributor to society, right? I work in the health information industry and I put out these videos and these videos, you know, 
lead people to either study this or find out about programs that can help them to pay for education or they can follow the independent study video that I put in every single uh, description box of all my videos that tells you how you can independently study on your own. You just have to get the books, you know, and it's possible for anybody to change their life. You just have to do a little bit of research, you know, you have to do a little bit of research, have some discipline, have some situativeness, you know, about the whole thing, because it's not easy. It's not easy being an adult going back to school and learning. And especially when it's something that you've never experienced before, you have no experience in the industry at all. And you're like, you know, how do I do this? You know, <laughs> am I doing the right thing? Yes, you are. You know, yes, you are. And so um, if you're on the fence, if you don't know, and you have access to this program, you know, there's nothing wrong with going through this program and showing up, right? Showing up and doing what you are agreeing to do, which is go through this program, complete the program, graduate, get your certification. Because if this, these funds are there to help you, you know, you're also going to be giving back by being employed, by, you know, being able to be self-sustaining and, you know, not having to do all these other things. And, you know, and yes, there's times when people need help and it's good. It's good to reach out to those programs when you do need help because that's what they are there for. And it just makes everything all the much more better because look how productive that you can be and that pro being productive helps somebody else, right? So by me being productive and helping all of you, then some of you need that motivation and that encouragement to, to get going and get to your studies. And some of you tell me that you hear me. <laughs> Whenever you are thinking, you know, oh, I should study, I should study, and then, you know, here it goes blue, you know, you got to study 20 hours per week. Yeah, you do, you know, and so that helps somebody to get motivated to study so they can complete their program. They complete their program, they get their certification, they get out there to find a job. Then the next thing they know, they have a friend and their friend was like, well, you know, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm struggling to find a job. Hey, uh, watch this YouTube video, <laughs> watch this YouTube channel where she talks about how she used the WIOA program to help her to pay for schooling. Okay, well, let me find out about that. Oh, here we go. And that's another person that, that went off and, and has a career now because of it too. You know, so it's a good thing, guys. You know, use those programs and, and follow through with what you say you're going to do. So that way, more people can benefit from these programs, all right? And that's the important thing. The more people that benefit from these programs, the better off our world will be, right? Because we have people who are being productive and we have people who get excited about, you know, going to work and doing, you know, their their work. I do. I am very happy to uh, work uh, in this career field and, you know, be in this industry, then come here and talk about it with all of you. It makes my heart happy. <laughs> So with that said, uh, best of luck to you out there. Check out your workforce office if you are in a minimum wage paying job, right? See if you can't get involved in this WIOA program and see if they can't get you um, your, your schooling paid for. So that way you can get into a career field that's going to fulfill you more. I'm just saying. So with that said, if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all next time. Bye.